Hello, good evening and welcome back to In The Know, the live and interactive Cheltenham preview show brought to you by Coral and the Racing Post. As you can see with that delightful graphic just below me, my name is uh, Ross Briley and I'm officially, you can't take it away from me, a broadcaster. Who knew? Uh, but we've got a, a wonderful show for you uh, tonight, so get in touch with your uh, selections and tips and questions for tonight's panel via YouTube, Facebook or Twitter. Uh, and we've got all sorts to get through. Of course, we'll be looking back at a, a red-hot weekend of action uh, from both Saturday and Sunday. And tonight's races we'll be taking an in-depth look at are the Ballymore, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, the Champion Chase, and the big one itself, the Gold Cup to boot. So plenty to get through this evening. Uh, we'll also be joined by one of Ireland's top trainers, one of Britain's top tipsters, and, as I'm contractually obliged to say, the world's greatest PR rep. So that'll be coming up a little bit later on. On the show, uh, but first things first, an announcement. Uh, of course, we had a uh, first show last week where we're joined by uh, Patrick Mullins, uh, and we asked him about pretty much every uh, runner in the uh, the yard. But the one that everyone wanted to know about was Benny Dadur. Uh, he said he didn't know what was going to happen. The next day, she was ruled out of the festival. Uh, so from here on in, we are changing the name of the show to In the Dark. So thanks ever so much for those suggestions on social media. Uh, so, but of course it is. It is frustrating for anti-post punters and punters alike. Everyone who's looking forward to the Cheltenham Festival, it is frustrating uh, to know uh, not only uh, whether your horse is uh, uh, going for the correct race or whether it's going to turn up at all. So, uh, hopefully uh, things will change uh, this uh, evening. But uh, again, it was tough on Patrick last week. I don't know about you, but uh, I have absolutely no idea what's going through my dad's head at any point uh, during the day either. So, so it's probably a big ask for him. But for tonight, hopefully we will get the truth, but nothing but the truth uh, from the horse's mouth with tonight's special guest we have a fantastic guest uh, who has a, uh, a wonderful lineup of horses uh, for the festival this year as well he's already trained nine Cheltenham festival winners can he get a few more this season fingers crossed and welcome to the show Henry de Bromhead Henry how are you yeah very good thanks thanks for having me great to be here thanks for coming on you look very uh, you look very comfortable have you, have you got a um, you appear to have uh, erected some sort of tent or a gazebo yeah, not quite. Just in the office, but no, comfortable enough. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you doing, Henry? Uh, it's been a, a fairly uh, a fairly bleak winter, I'd say, but uh, spring is in the air and um, it's looking good for the festival for you. Yeah, no, all's good. Um, yeah, we've been busy, thankfully. Obviously, we've been very lucky to be able to keep going um, and uh, fortunate to have had a good season thus far. About three weeks to go before the uh, the festival, uh, Henry. Like you said, you had two winners last year. You had two winners the year before. Uh, and I'd say, I mean, you had a pretty good uh, lineup coming into last season's uh, festival. Um, are you feeling the same about this year? Of course, you, you could potentially come away with a, uh, with a champion chase, with a gold cup, with a champion hurdle. If everything goes to plan, it could be a, a very good year for you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, at this stage, I suppose, you know, we're very lucky. We've got a lovely team of horses to go with. But it's Cheltenham, and yeah, I always go there hoping we can have one winner and see how we go after that. So you're uh, you're not necessarily. Do you go into these uh, these big festivals with targets, or are you just a, a hope for the best and wait and see kind of trainer? I yeah, I, I mean certainly this festival. Yeah, it's it's kind of see how it all unfolds first, and and as I say, if, if we can get one on the board, we'll be delighted, and then you know, uh, try and focus on getting another one after that. But uh, initially, it's just try and get one on the board. Great, fantastic stuff. Thanks uh, ever so much, Henry. Uh, get your questions in for him via the social media channels. And as I said, our uh, top tips are for this uh, evening. A, a man who barely spends a second in the present because he's always uh, previewing anti-post races, so he should be uh, in the right place uh, for tonight's show. It is the one and only Mr Pricewise himself, Tom Segal. Hello there, how are you? I'm very well, Tom. How are you? Yeah, all good. All good. Bit bored, stuck at home, but you know, not like Henry and get out every day. I'm stuck here with my with my kids and my doggies, but I'm all right. Absolutely. We battle on. Yeah, you've uh, how's the how's the winter treated you, Tom? Ah, uh, it's been long. It's been <laughs> long. <laughs> That's for sure. We're getting there though. I mean, we're getting there. It's, the spring's coming, isn't it? And we'll all be uh, not long now. Uh, how do you uh, how are you feeling about your your festival this year? Of course, so like you said, it's um, very much a yesterday felt like a completely different. Uh, kettle of fish at, uh, at Newbury on quick ground. Yeah, it was it was quite it was it was very noticeable, wasn't it? I mean, we've been sitting here watching slogging through the mud for a couple of months now, and Newbury yesterday was a totally different kettle of fish. It you know you you know the long range forecasted for 
for you know pretty dry conditions now up until Cheltenham and you never know what the ground will be it won't will never be like it used to be which was could, you could get quite quick ground but it will never be that again but uh, uh, I don't think we're going to have a heavy ground Cheltenham put it like that and are you happy with your uh, have you got a nice portfolio to uh, to go to war with as we stand uh, you just never know Ross one some years you think you've done a whole load of rubbish and, and, and one and a couple come in and then the next year you think you've got a whole raft of great selections and they don't win it you just never know like, look you try your best and see what happens but as henry said it's so difficult to get one home so uh if we if we get one or two we'll be we'll be uh, we'll be laughing fantastic cheers tom we'll see what uh, you have to say about uh, our feature races tonight uh, and uh, we'll also see what we've uh, we've got from the, uh, the the price boost king to my left as well mr simon clare from coral uh simon good evening and, and first things first uh, I feel betrayed. You've had a haircut. <laughs> I had a little trim. I, I looked at myself last week and I was overgrown. So uh, luckily I've got a, a close friend who's able to give it a quick trim. So that's oh, lovely stuff. Well, uh, maybe you can send it around to my house. But uh, uh, yeah, we've got, we're looking at some cracking races tonight. And um, again, it was noticeable this weekend. I mean, we did last week's show and we had nothing to reflect on uh, in terms of market movers for the previous days due to the weather. Uh, it's only a week later, but uh, the markets uh, have been pretty reactionary over the past 48 hours. They have. It was a real famine and feast. Yeah, we had a week in review slot for last week and there was nothing to review because we had so little racing. But um, some great performances over the weekend. I thought uh, to have Goshen put up the performance in the Kingwell, you know, we thought he might have been gone almost or you know, lost his mojo. Um, and he's right back in. He was 5-1 to one, uh, from 20 after winning the Kingwell. He's now 9-2. to two. And I think he makes the race fascinating with the, adding that pace element to it with Honeysuckle and Epitont sitting off it. Um, we'll talk about that, no doubt, later. Mm. Um, I thought Soaring Glory for John Joe was brilliant in the Betfair Hurdle. It looked a good Betfair Hurdle. I thought it looked really competitive and he won it easily. Is he good enough to win a Supreme? Well, he's been cut to, he was cut to 12 to 1 from 25, now cut to 10 to 1, so people backing him. Um, and even Listener Gar Oscar, who was a, was a good second at Haydock to third wind, mm. giving weight away, reigning champ, loves Cheltenham. We cut uh, him to 20 to 1 from 25. He's been backed into 16. So uh, just, to, you know, suddenly anti-post action bursting into life. Absolutely. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll come to those races in just a second. Uh, but first things first, Henry, I'm just going uh, to come back to you and, uh, and pick your brains a little bit because, uh, of course, the, uh, the name was mentioned there in the shape of Honeysuckle and um, unbeaten uh, <laughs> 10 from 10 now going into the, the festival in fantastic form. And it must make it um, a little bit easier to get out of bed in the morning Knowing that uh, that she's in the uh, in the stable, absolutely. Yeah, look, she's brilliant. Um, as you say, ten from ten, and uh, just feel very lucky to have her. Uh, she's she's just been amazing, really. Uh, she <laughs> just keeps winning and um, seems to be going from strength to strength. Yeah, she seemed to be uh, a career best last time out. Did she surprise you with that performance? Um. I wouldn't like to say I was expecting it, but you know, you'd never be surprised with her. She's just so good. Um, uh, like, yeah, she probably brought it to another level. But in fairness, I thought she put up some pretty good ones last year as well. Um, her Hatton's Grace last year I thought was very good, or when I say like 2019. Um, and um, I know she wasn't so good this year, but it was her first run for a long time. She took a little blow. So, um, uh, you know, it, it was, but like, yeah, like you say, it was a very good performance. So delighted. Yeah, and you, uh, you swerved the, the champion last year, of course, uh, to win a, a dramatic uh, mayor's hurdle. And uh, uh, what changed uh, your mind this year? What was it just a, a, another year older, a bit, uh, a bit stronger, a bit cannier? Or was the, or did you just think that, you know, because of course, uh, you know, we're talking 2008, it was kind of the race that got away, wasn't it? A little bit with size in Europe. So you've got a chance to, uh, to put that memory to bed and um, she's, uh, she's got a cracking chance. Yeah, she was still um, a very young mare last year. And um, I suppose we felt we probably had a stronger chance in the mare's hurdle. So that's why we opted for that. Um, and it was fantastic, you know, stay keeping to her own sex and just to, to get um, a win on the board for Kenny Alexander, her owner. We're brilliant to get that as well at Cheltenham. So we sort of feel we've achieved that. And um, uh, it's nice to go and have a go at the champion. Yeah, I think we've every right. And yeah, obviously take our chance. 
Absolutely. Well, uh, and it's, um, again, we're going to have a quick look at the, uh, the, the a review of the weekend's action. Uh, were, you, uh, were you worried um, about Goshen as he came out at the weekend? Did you think you had pretty much the field covered and now suddenly you've got a new challenger? No, definitely <laughs> never would think I had the field covered at all. You know, um, I didn't actually see the race, um, but... Um, Obviously, there's been a big reaction to him. He was a good horse last year. He'd been disappointing up until now this year. And uh, like I said, I didn't see it, but he sounded impressive. Um, so, look, it's a champion hurdle. Always going to be plenty in it, you know? OK, we'll get in touch with any questions for, uh, for Henry uh, this, uh, this evening, like I said, on uh, Twitter, YouTube or Facebook. And we do have a tweet in, uh, Henry, about one of your, uh, your other big chances at the festival. James Corden says, where is Henry going to send Put the Kettle On? Of course, last year's uh, Arkle uh, winner and uh, unbeaten at the, uh, the track, uh, Henry. So it's probably a, a nice problem to have here. But um, do we know, as it stands, which race she'll be contesting? Um, I would say, uh, sorry, I've got my phone, I thought, on some kind of mute, but it's hopping at the moment, um, or some kind of do not disturb, obviously, I haven't done it right. Uh, I would say with her, um, put the kettle on, yeah, look, she's mighty. Um, uh, I, I was probably thinking about the, um, we were thinking about the mare's chase, but I would say we'd start, uh, I, I'm leaning back towards the champion chase. Um, you know, the record, the Arkle winners have such a good record in it. Um, she's so good over the course and distance. Um, I just don't know if I want to, if we need to change it this year. I think I've have, have one good go now. We're sort of in, uh, we're in discussion. I'm in discussion with the Darmides and the syndicate that owner as to where we'll go. So we haven't confirmed as yet, but I'd say we're all leaning towards the champion chase. Fantastic stuff. Thanks, Henry. We'll talk about that race in detail later on. And thanks to, apparently, James Corden for getting in touch. Uh, who knew he was a fan? Uh, but, uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll get stuck into those races in a second, but let's just have a quick look back at the weekend. Tom, um, uh, we, uh, we had some fairly dramatic races. A few of them will be folded into the previews later on, but uh, in particular, the lights of, uh, of Goshen uh, and, uh, and Soaring Glory really, uh, really put their names uh, on, some, uh, on some lists for big races at the festival. Yeah, I mean, uh, before the weekend, I was I was contemplating, you know, Ireland having, you know, 15, 16, 17 winners. It was really hard to find a British trained horse that was that was favourite for a, for a graded race. We had Shishki and I think we had Paisley Park as favourites, the British British trainers do. But I thought it uh, over the weekend, we actually threw our hat into the ring a bit better. It's always better when there's a bit of competition between the British and the Irish at, uh, at the festival. And I thought, champ. And Goshen put their put their names firmly in the hat for the Gold Cup and Champion Hurdle. I really thought Goshen hit the line really hard. I thought it was really impressive. I thought he was brilliant in the Triumph Hurdle until the last uh, mis the mishap at the last last year. I think he's a really big threat to Honeysuckle. So I thought, and also Soaring Glory. I, I'm not a great fan of the two mile uh, novice hurdle form at the moment. I think appreciate it is very take onable. That's a word. Is that a word? Take on the ball? Don't know. <laughs> sure, but, uh, absolutely. <laughs> but I thought, I thought, I think he's, I, I don't think he's as anything like a good seven to four shot. And I thought Soaring Glory was really good. Uh, I know he was only rated, what, 130 odd, but I thought he was the best bumper horse in, uh, in Britain last year. Only two times he's properly been beaten, he's been on heavy ground. And if it's good ground or slightly better ground than that, uh, come. Uh, come Cheltenham on the first day of Cheltenham, uh, I think he's got a big shot in the in the Supreme as well. So it was just nice to see some British trained horses throw their hat in their ring and look really, really good because it, they've been few and far between this year. And every time you, t you, you looked up, you were thinking, oh, you know, Willie Mullins or Henry or Gordon Elliott was going to win a big race. But it's nice to have some competition and Champ was there, Goshen's there and now Soaring Glory's there as well. So I really enjoyed this weekend. I thought it was a, it was a, it got me, it, it got me going. We've been sick of watching horses slogging around in heavy ground for, for so long. It was, uh, it was nice to see. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, Henry, between you, Gordon, and uh, Willie, it looked like, yeah, you were going to pretty much take uh, every race uh, over the course of the four days. Was there anything uh, over in Ireland at Navan, perhaps, that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that piqued your interest? Um, uh, for, with regards to Chalm, we had a lovely winner, Atlantic Ferry, but she won't go. Uh, she'll wait here for the Maris Novice Hurdle, this grade one at Ferry House a couple of weeks after Cheltenham. Uh, so she was really good. Um, 
I'm, uh, I'm not sure if any of them. I, I didn't really follow up. Bar my own, I wasn't. Uh, I didn't really see a whole lot there. Uh, Beacon Edge, I don't know what they're doing. So I kind of just focus on my own ones. Very well. We'll get to them in just a second. Uh, of course, there were other horses to, uh, to mention as well. Ala Philippe might go for the Albert Bartlett, Dashiell Drasher, maybe for the Ryanair, and um, the uh, probably one of the most popular horses in training in the shape of Tiger yeah. Roll, who ran a, uh, a strange race, but uh, it was an interesting race as well with Fury Row for the Stayers Hurdle. So it was a lively weekend. What, what else made a, a mark in the markets? Yeah, I thought Tiger Row was interesting. I actually tweeted, was that a good run or not? I couldn't quite <laughs> work it out because for about 80% of it, you thought, oh, look, he looks like the old Tiger Row. And it was just the way he just kind of stopped and, uh, you know, was sort of eased down going to the, to the line that I just couldn't work it out. So he's 92 for the cross country. I imagine he had to run really well there to then mm. go for the Grand National, for which he's 16 to 1. Uh, the horse, I, I, I thought the race was great at the weekend, like, like Tom. I love watching Newby, but I thought Ascot was some fantastic racing, like Dash or Drasher, but remastered. I thought Tom Scoodle gave him a beautiful ride from the front, jumped every fence, aggressive, reminded me almost of his dad riding for Martin, you know, mm. and, uh, and I just thought, you know, he, he may not be a Channel Festival winner, he's 14 for the National Hunt Chase, Chase, but I just thought it was one of those great performances, you know, seeing him jump round in the Reynolds, it was fantastic. Absolutely, we'll have plenty more of that uh, to come, but let's have a look at uh, the, the races that we are going to cover this evening in a bit more detail. Uh, starting off uh, with the uh, the Ballymore here over two miles and uh, five furlongs. It is a fascinating little race this year. Uh, Gail de Maynil heading the betting at uh, five to two. Still got appreciated in there, of course, at seven to two. Bob Ollinger at uh, seven to two as well. Brave Man's Game at four to one. It is ten to one. Metier twelve to one. Bally Adam fourteen's Blue Lord sixteen. Statler and bigger prices the rest. And again, let us know on the socials what you fancy for the uh, the Ballymore this year. But um, from a personal point of view, Henry, absolutely no pressure whatsoever. But um, Bob Ollinger has got to be, uh, I think, one of my strongest fancies of the week. This horse has gone from strength to strength. And in particular, uh, for a horse who's likely to make a chaser in the future, Henry, he, uh, he hurdles very fluently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, delighted with him. Horse we've always liked. We bought him... Um uh, we bought him from Pat Doyle after he won his point to point and uh, he won his bumper very impressively. He won a point to point bumper at Gorin last year, just before Cheltenham. And he's a horse we've always thought a, a hell of a lot with uh, of. Um, uh, so much so I went and threw him against Bernie Hollow for his first run over hurdles, uh, thinking we'd beat him. Uh, unfortunately, we got beaten, but only just. And we look green over the last two. He's got a lot of pace. He stays well. Uh, then obviously he won his maiden hurdle, which was good, and then came out and won his grade one. Um, yeah, look, we think a lot of him, and uh, we like him a lot. Um, so he's in the Supreme, he's in the Ballymore. I'd imagine we'd be leaning towards the Ballymore, um, and uh, looking forward to having a go. Now, he hasn't been seen since uh, uh, last year, of course. Is, uh, has, has he been okay since then? The January and February treated him well? Yeah, he won his, won his grade one in January, so he, he, he was out about a month ago, or it's, you know, I don't know, early January. So, yeah, he's good. He's great. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, he uh, is currently a 7-2 shot here then, uh, Bob Ollinger. Are you, uh, is there a particular danger for you again? Do you just concentrate on your own horses, or with a horse like this, do you go out and think, yeah, we, we have one to beat here, uh, and uh, will tactics be, be altered, or are you just going to play your own game? Kind of focus on our on our own horse. That's how I do it, uh, rightly or wrongly. Kind of focus on them, training them, and and right, you know, riding them. Um, I think you can get too caught up. I, I I would get too caught up if I'm starting to try and focus on everything else as well. So uh, just try and get my horses there in the best shape, and uh, and then leave you know discuss with Rachel. But she usually has a plan, and um, leave it to her really on that front. Um, have my few little views, but yeah, that's more or less it. Yeah, Bob Ollinger then seven to two. Uh, Tom for the uh, the Ballymore and uh, Bob Ollinger Brave Man's Game. Gail McDermott Neil. It's it, it looks like a race that's very very top heavy this year. Yeah, it's hard to find one uh, from from the sort of left field. Uh, I, d I didn't know what to make of Galliard Domain Neil. He looked impressive, didn't he at, at Leopardstown? But I know the second horse isn't even going. The third horse is sort of half fancied i think for the for the albert bartlett i'm not sure it was the strongest race he won uh i think bob ollinger's form is better 
I think Bob Ollinger's grade one form is better than Galliard de Maynil's. I'd have him the other way around. I do think Brave Man's game's very dangerous, though. Uh, he was impressive in the Chalo hurdle. Uh, he was, in fact, the only horse to beat him over hurdles is Soaring Glory. Beat him at Chepstow just narrowly uh, at the start of the season. So I think the form's very good for Brave Man's game, and he win a grade one, however good the grade one is by, I think it was 20 odd lengths or 18 lengths or whatever he won at, at Newbury. He's clearly very good. I think he's the best hope for the Nichols Yard, I think, for the whole week. So he's obviously a big player. Uh, I'm a Bob Ollinger fan. I am. I think he, I think he'll. Uh, I just think he's got that star quality that the other two. I think Brave Man's game will probably be a staying chaser in time. Galliard de Maynil. I'm not a fan of Hoods. I know. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I just don't. Try, uh, if you if a trainer puts a hood on, it seems to me that it's a, a mission that they they're scared they're not going to settle. And I don't like horses running at Cheltenham in Hoods. And if he runs in Galliard de Maynil with a hood last time, I know it's fine. And he ran. He settled and whatever, but I just don't like it. It's something I've got a prejudice against. So he's off my list. I think it's between the two of them, actually, Bob Ollinger and Brave Man's Game. Uh, I'm in the Bob camp. OK, we've got a, uh, a social question for you uh, here, Tom, uh, ahead of this Ballymore as well. Uh, he says, which horse does he think is overpriced or underpriced for the Ballymore? And that's come from, uh, from Mark Smith. Thanks, Mark. So, Tom, uh, who's overpriced, who's underpriced in the Ballymore? Uh, I think, well, I think Galliard's underpriced. Uh, if there was one from left field in the Ballymore, it would be Gordon Elliott's juvenile duffel coat, but I'm not sure he's going to make it. I think he's had a setback, which uh, would, would count against him, obviously, if he's not running and he's not overpriced at all, see. But uh, <laughs> I like the juvenile form. I like the juvenile form a lot. I mean, if you look at the, uh, the Elliott horses at Leopardstown and Fairy House Lana here and Quixilios, they were winning their races in faster times than the novice hurdle, grade one novice hurdles on the same day. I think the juvenile form is very strong. Not convinced the novice hurdle form is that strong, bar Bob Ollinger and Brave Man's game. So if a juvenile was to run in the Supreme or the uh, or the or the Ballymore, I'd give them a shot getting the seven pounds, whatever they get. So have a look out for Duffel Coat if he turns up, but I'm, I wouldn't back him now. I think I think there's a there's a risk that he might not even make it. Okay, so who? Uh, and you, so, are you a Bob Ollinger fan then for this race? Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely in the Bob camp. Definitely, yeah. Very well, and Henry, I, I, I can only assume that you're in the Bob Ollinger camp. But just to just to pick up quickly on what something Tom said there about the hood, where do you stand on that particular uh, uh, a bit of headgear? Why and when would you use a hood on one of your horses? Probably to try and saddle them. You know that that's that's the main reason. If you thought they were running a bit free, so um, that that would be it. Yeah, yeah. But on a horse like Gail Maynil, he came into the race off a win. Um, so it, almost like everything went to plan, but they still put the hood on. Um, yeah, he won He won over two and a half, didn't he, at Leopardstown? Mm. And that novice was 2-6. So they went up another couple of furlongs. I'd say they were just worried, you know, like, yeah, I'd say they just to try and switch him off a little bit. Um, uh, it was a very fast run race. We were actually second to him at Christmas. And we had a mare, Magic Days, who went a ferocious gallop in that race. So that helped him settle. And maybe they were just worried going up in trip that they just wanted to um, help them settle. You know, I, I yeah. OK, yeah. So uh, Bob Ollinger there for Tom, obviously Bob for, uh, for Henry as well. Uh, and Simon, you've got a price boost for this uh, race and it might be... Good news for both our guests. It may well be, yeah. I should point out we're non run no bet uh, all race for Cheltenham. So obviously if you do you know, have a few quid on Duff, we're going to go 9-2. to two. I think it's 7-2 to two currently. So we're going 9-2 to two, uh, for the rest of this evening. I think the plan is to try and hold these price boots through the week. But clearly, yeah. uh, if the money comes in droves and the price moves, so it may well do, given the bullishness that they're talking, they've uh, passed on, um, it may not last super long. But 9-2, to two, Bob Ollinger. Nice to Bob Ollinger, then the price boost for the Ballymore. And uh, again, get your, uh, your bets on there with, uh, with Coral, the price boost, hopefully lasting the whole week as we go uh, from uh, Novice uh, Hurdle Company uh, up to Novice uh, Chase Company now. And uh, the, uh, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, of course, you know, constantly having to uh, reprogram my brain to not call it by its previous... Uh, Previous sponsor, but there we go. That's the uh, that's what happens with these races. The Brown Advisory Novices Chase, of course, the three-mile uh, Grade One novice here, 
and we have a very short price favourite indeed. And many people's banker of the entire week in the shape of Monkfish uh, at 8 to 11. Royal Pagal is uh, still in the betting there at 7 to 2. Latest exhibition 7 to 1. Eclat de Ria is 8 to 1. 9 to 1 next destination. 12 to 1 the big breakaway. 14 Sporting John and Cole Reavy. And bigger prices the rest then. Father Brown advisory. Well, we'll ask Henry about his runner in a second, but we'll come to you first for this one, uh, Tom. And uh, I think a lot of people, when they see a, an odds-on shot in a novice's chase, they uh, they get a little bit worried. But I think statistically, uh, it's probably the best type of race to uh, to go for. And there, there seems to be quite a, a golfing class between Monkfish and, and a few of his rivals here this year. Uh, he's clearly very, very, very good, isn't he? I thought he was brilliant at, uh, at the Dublin Racing Festival. Once again, as you say, though, he's odds on in a in he's he's been beating the same horse, hasn't he? He's been been beating latest exhibition every time. Now he was very impressive in doing so the other day. I'm not sure latest exhibition ran his race, to be honest. And it's a different race, different track, different day, lot better competition, obviously. Uh do I think he'll win? Yes, I do. Would I back him at odds on? No, I wouldn't. It's as simple as that. Uh look, he he could be there's something about him that's I mean, the thing is he's such a good jumper isn't he? he's very fluent he's very quick and yet he still had the pace to win the albert Parler last year and if you look back at it he was really keen during the race and everything it looked like you know to to to, to stay on and win like in the in the manner he did to to come past the two up the, up the straight he's he's obviously got a lot of stamina as well and look, i can't find any fault in him to be perfectly honest but as as you say i mean he's odds on you know two weeks whatever it is before the race it'll be on much quicker ground I think I don't think it's going to as I say I'm not sure it's going to be heavy like it was for his last couple of runs so yeah look he's not for me but I can imagine him being in everyone else's Yankees and trebles and doubles and whatever and, and quite rightly so probably but uh it's just not my style of style of betting is to back an odds on chance at Cheltenham so he's off my list but uh I think he's a very very talented horse yeah, I mean, this used to be the, the kind of race where the horses who had slogged it out through the winter and came here with five, six, seven runs. Uh, I think the horses like Boston's Angel uh, back in the uh, the day. And um, but over the past few seasons, Tom, it has kind of gone towards the, the more lightly raced, uh, classier rivals. Um, is there anything in here that that could have still uh, half a stone of improvement to uh, to come on the day? Oh, there's plenty. There's plenty. Henry's horse is a brilliant jumper, isn't he? He's done absolutely nothing wrong. I think he's two from two over fences. He was impressive. Was it a nace the other day? Uh, he stays strongly. He's very, very good jumper. Uh, he's got a lot of time for Eklak to rear. It's just whether he's taking on one that's slightly, slightly too good for him. It's possible. But uh, as I mean, the difference is we've got the uh, Marsh Chase now, haven't we? So in the old days, or in the Boston's Angel era, or, or those sort of things, you know, you'd have a 20 runner race here, wouldn't you? Or a 16 runner race and lots of lots of variables. It was probably a bigger stamina test than it's been. But I think it'll be a small field again. I think there'll be seven or eight runners. I think Monkfish will, will scare him off. And so there is plenty of each way value. I think Henry's horse sounds, um, it sounds like I'm going to suggest all of Henry's horses. But I thought <laughs> at eight to one, given that, given what a great jumper he is and how well he stays, I would be very surprised if he's out the three. Well, uh, yeah, Henry, uh, you've uh, you've got an athletic rear here who has um, quietly uh, announced himself on the uh, on the scene. Um, two from two, as uh, as Tom said, over uh, over fences, uh, making all uh, pretty much all the running on his uh, on his two starts to uh, to date. And of course, this is a race that you went very close in uh, last year in one of the most dramatic finishes of the festival with Manella Indo. How does Eclat de Rear compare to him? Yeah, look, he's a lovely horse. Um, he he won uh, for won over hurdles last year, and then obviously uh, because of the lockdown, he couldn't run again. We were probably we were thinking of going to Aintree with him uh, after he had won um, for the novice hurdle there. So put him away, brought him back this year, and yeah, look, he's just he's he, he loves fences. He's really taken to them well, as you can see. He stays really well. And um, he seems very straightforward. So uh, probably similar to Indo. Indo obviously Indo had won a couple of Grade Ones over hurdles um, in in his um, hurdle season, whereas this guy never got the opportunity to progress. Um, but uh, he loves jumping fences, and uh, as I say, he stays well. So hoping for a good run. Uh, he has been uh, very prominently ridden on his uh, on his starts over fences. Uh, again, will they be, those be the uh, the tactics again to just let him uh, jump and bowl along? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, again, that's sort of Rachel's department. What she'd like to do as well. Um, 
uh, obviously Monkfish has been doing that and um, I'm not sure what else will end up in it um, but um, uh, well obviously latest exhibition and so I will see we'll see how it unfolds but I'd imagine he'll be handy away he's a forward going kind of guy so and he jumps well so we normally try to sort of do something along those lines. So, uh, like you said, it was a lockdown that um, curtailed the season. So, you suggesting that last year you, you, you know, you were firmly in the camp that this horse was a was a greater performer. It's not that they've developed over the course of the last twelve months. You were you were hoping for uh, a, a few more runs over smaller obstacles last season. Yeah, we, he won his maiden hurdle impressively. It's always a step, and you can never say you know for sure. Uh, but that was going to be our next step to see how, how he got on in graded company. So, um, but like I say, he couldn't do it. And he's come out and, and uh, won his grade three the other day. So it's fantastic and delighted to get it for Peter Davies, his owner. It's so brilliant, yeah. I think there is an eight to one shot then uh, here for uh, for this. Uh, Simon, just a quick uh, word on the on markets of this race. Of course, uh, Eclectic Rio probably one of the um, the biggest movers in recent uh, uh, recent weeks. Uh, Sporting John also will have mm. made a bit of impact in the market. And then you've got um, the uh, the conundrum of uh, of Royal Pagayle as well. Of course, um, whether he will take his chance in the Gold Cup or turn up uh, here. So. Um, I know Monkfish is the banker, supposedly, 8 to 11, but there are actually plenty of intriguing uh, subplots. Yeah, listen, I think he's a horse that bookies on the day. And again, Coach Day will be looking to take on... Um, I mean, Tom's right. He's, he's the best horse in the race, and it's hard to know who's going to ride. But I, I think latest ex exhibition may well turn up again. I certainly think next dest destination will. He's a good horse. I think the big, big breakaway is definitely going to run in this. Um, I think Sporting John's going to run in it. So there's some quite interesting each-way alternatives. Um, Monkfish has beaten the same horse latest exhibition as last two runs. So I, it's early on. It's the second day. <clears throat> is it third race, second race? And um, so I think we'll have a crack at Monkfish come the day. And uh, so now I, I, it's a race that o over the years gone by, that those sort of staying chasers like Rule Supreme. I think Fulmer's previous start won. Um, more recently, it has been the classier types. But I still think the big breakaway looks a real big stong st staying chaser. If the Tizard team can rack into a bit of form, he might be a good each-way chance. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an always-on favourite. I think we'll be taking on. Yeah, just a, just a quick word, Tom, on uh, the Tizard team again as a uh, as a tipster. How much are you taking in the uh, stable form into account? Of course, um, statistics-wise, it has been a quiet year for, uh, for for Colin Tizard. Is that something that's preying on your mind coming the festival, or are you uh, assuming that they will now spring into life? Uh, I always I'm, I always find that as soon as someone says a stable's out of form, they come back into mm. form. So I, I always think that it's probably benefits me as a, as a punter and a tipster sometimes that people think stables are out of form because you get bigger prices about horses that probably shouldn't be. Look, he's obviously not had the greatest time of it and I still don't think they're running as well as they could be, but he's got he's, he's had winners. You know, he's had some horses run very well. The big breakaway has to sort out his jumping, but I think Kempton in the Corto Star was probably the wrong track for him. Uh, he is a good horse. He was definitely a good a good novice hurdler and he was, you know, I think he was fourth in the Ballymore if he was to bounce back, he's he's definitely in there with a shot. But uh, as far as uh, trainer form goes, no, it's not something that I'm, I actually quite like it when people say trainers are out of form, truth be told. Uh, and just a quick one on Royal Pagale as well. Which race would you go for if you if he was yours? Uh, I'd run him in the Gold Cup, simply because you've got Monkfish in this. Uh, if, it, if Monkfish wasn't there, he'd, he'd definitely be running. I don't think he'll win the Gold Cup, but I, that's where I'd run him, simply because you've got the favourite in this race. Why run your two horses in the same race? Absolutely. OK, so Monkfish odds on then here. Uh, Tom, like you said, this is uh, not your uh, type of bet. Way too short for you. So what is the uh, value angle? I have I've backed the big breakaway. I have backed the big breakaway. I think he'll run well. Uh, I was slightly concerned uh, about his jumping last time, but I did a, I did a, a sort of a preview for the King George uh, a few months ago, and Harry Cobden was on it, and he, he was adamant that this was the best horse one of the best horses he's ever ridden and that it would win the rsa so at the prices i'd still give him a shot at around 14 16 to 1 he'd be my each way bet but truth be told i think monkfish will probably win and i think henry's horse has got a good chance too from henry eckler de rio is there anything you're particularly worried about again two runs over fences so far nothing's uh, nothing's gone wrong but is there anything uh that's uh, that might be Worrying you in the back of your mind about a horse going for a big race like this? 
with Eklat, uh, no, I, I think uh, look, he's 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 done well. He's done really well. So no, we're happy with his prep. Yeah. Okay, and uh, again, I, I, are you are you much of a a punter yourself, uh, Henry, or do you do you ever look at the prices? Or if I said to you, is Eklat de Rio a decent better eight to one? I'm a shocking punter. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm a shocking I'm... trainer. <laughs> Thankfully, I learned early enough in my training career that I'm a shocking punter. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't take much heed of, of yeah, no, I, I, I would always look at what way our horses are priced, definitely. And the odd time I'd suddenly go, God, I, you know, that could be value. Um, but uh, if I back them, usually they get beaten. So, no. Right, so you're suggesting that uh, if you do say to back one tonight, we should lay it and, uh, and vice versa. But <laughs> <laughs> so, Well, yeah. We could do a job swap, uh, Henry. We could, um, you could, um, you could tip Antipose for a month, and, and, and Tom could trade <laughs> your horses. Yeah, we could yeah, try. You, you, Henry, you'd be stuck in your house for another month. How do you fancy that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll pitch that. Maybe, uh, maybe Channel Four or something will pick it up. Perhaps uh, an alternative job swap. Uh, so, um, but uh, obviously, Eklat, your your big hope for the race, uh, Henry. Yeah. So, uh, good luck with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, sorry, sorry, yeah. go on. No, I... no, that's I was just agreeing. Yeah, that's it. We, you know, jumps and stays. So hopefully he'll give a good account. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and Simon, uh, what do you? Again, I asked you last week. What do you think will win? And what, uh, as a bookmaker's perspective, what don't you want to win? I mean, I don't think you want Monkfish to win because they'll be yeah. linked up in all the doubles and trebles. And a few of the favourites will have probably run on the first day. But um, I'd love the big breakaway to win. Obviously, we sponsor the Colin Tizard team. You know, it's not been the best of seasons. It's been frustrating. To Tom's point, of course, Native River just about to 7-1-1. to one and one, So there yeah. is value to be had from the drift. Um, and the big breakaway is out to a big price now after being beaten at Kempton. But I think the track didn't suit him. It was a good horse that beat him. And uh, back at Cheltenham, he stays. If he can jump around, he'd probably go well at a big price. But whether he can beat mm. Monkfish, don't know. The Tizard horses don't really win at short prices, do they? Anyway, That's at the true. festival, uh, you know, you uh, you mm. think of their uh, their winners. They, they often go at uh, fairly inflated prices. They're often underrated. It's only the past sort of year or two that, that the market's kind of latched onto it, and now it's yeah. kind of gone the other way. So, uh, yeah, it, it could be it, people going on simply yeah. they've had a bad winter. Exactly. That that seems to be the only thing that people are pricing their horses up on. Definitely, and, look, you know, and it does. I mean, Tom, Tom's right. You've got to assume if they're running horses, you take that out of the equation. But um, they just, they, you know, I think we've all, you know, when trends are hot, even the outsiders seem to run well in yeah. that place. Whereas the, for the Tizzle team, it's just been frustrating this season. They've hit the bar a few times recently. But if they can come back into form, there's been a couple of Cheltenham's. They've gone in in great form and had blanks at Cheltenham. Mm. So they've always said the most important meeting is Cheltenham and then the Spring Festival. So if they, if they end the year strongly, they'll be happy. Absolutely, yeah. That's the uh, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. Again, it will go in eventually, I'm sure. Um, it will go in at the moment they change the sponsorship. Uh, but uh, let's go on to a couple of the, uh, the championship races then, and the Queen Mother Champion Chase is next on the agenda. Uh, Fast and Furious are over two miles, and again, another uh, odds-on uh, Mullins and Ritchie favourite here in the shape of uh, Shaken Poursoir. Uh, currently a four to six shot here for the, uh, the Queen Mother Champion Chase. Uh, it uh, is uh, currently six to one uh, for Altior, eight to one Nube Negra, eight to one Politolog, uh, 12 to one Put the Kettle On and First Flow and Min, uh, 14 to one Fakir Du Derry, and bigger prices uh, the rest than for the Champion Chase here. And Henry, we'll come to you first again. I mean, just repeat what I said for the last race, I guess. You've got an odd zombie in shot to, uh, to beat, uh, but you have a horse who's coming into it in fantastic nick in the shape of put the kettle on. And every year, Henry, people talk about Cheltenham horses uh, returning for the spring, and she absolutely loves this track. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Um, she uh, was really good over there last year. Obviously, she won in November and, uh, and then came back and won the Arkle. Um, uh, you know, they, they were like she and Fakir Duderi drew a long way clear of the rest. Um, she's tough out, loves the track. Aiden gets a great tune out of her. Um, and then back for the Schlur this year, she was amazing again. I thought she looked to be struggling the whole way and um, and then just stayed at it really well up the hill. Um, I don't think, Le I don't, in my mind, Leopardstown was never going to really be a track that would suit her. Um, and I thought she ran very well there at Christmas. Uh, we were planning to go to Kempton, but obviously we couldn't. So, um, 
yeah, when you see the record that Arco winners have in the champion chase, I think we have to go and have a go. Obviously, there's the Maris chase, but it's a half a mile longer. Uh, I did though think that when we dropped her back in trip, um, she improved a huge amount in her novice season. So um, uh, I think, yeah, go with that. And uh, that, that's the way we're leaning, Anya. That's the way I'd be leaning, but I would need to confirm with her owners. Um, and we obviously have Notebook as well, who's a little bit under the radar. Um, he, he was disappointing last year in the Arkel. He's in super form now. And uh, I wouldn't ever discount him either. He jumps brilliant. Uh, the better the ground, the better he'll run. Um, and he could be great value at a big price. So Notebook, will def you're looking uh, likely to run them both at the moment then, Henry? Yeah, I'd say so. Like I say, I'd just like to confirm with um, uh, the Darmides, um, uh before I say put the kettle on is going, but I think we were all leaning that way, but we said we'd discuss it in the next few days. And speaking of Notebook, uh, I mean, he went into last year's festival um, uh, looking like one of the, the strongest fancies of the week. And um, was it simply a case of him losing his race before the race? Because he was, he was very buzzy, he was keen to post, and he didn't necessarily see him himself. Yeah, I... I, I I'm not sure. I, I, I wonder, was it more? It could have been before the race. Yeah. But I was wondering, was it more the Irish Arkle? It was his fourth run. They'd had it had a hard race with cashback and they both stopped more uh, sort of similarly. Um, and had that taken its toll on him um, uh, this year, he's he's coming in and the champion chase will be his fourth run. So he'll be fresher. Um, might be that he doesn't like Cheltenham, but I, I don't I, I don't think so. I think, um, I, I, like I say, I, I, I think both of them have good each way chances, but he's obviously um, a bigger price, so he, he, he could be a good value each way bet. But I mean, obviously, wouldn't discount the mayor as well. Okay, yeah, well, so maybe two uh, darts to throw them for the, uh, the champion chase. Uh, and Tom, again, uh, another on shot here, but. F as you start to look at this race, I know Shaq and Passoir is obviously a, a hugely talented individual and we were robbed of the chance to see him in, uh, in last year's contest, so we, uh, we will be getting the, the clash between him, fingers crossed, and Altio uh, that we wanted last year. But, um, you know, the front two are, they're no spring chickens, that's for sure, uh, and that also goes for uh, Politolog as well. And uh, you've got a few horses who are potentially uh, coming up the, uh, the ranks, including Henry's pair and Nube Negra, uh, Fakir Dudori, and... I know first flow is nine years old, but even he's a, a new name uh, on the uh, on the list uh, for uh, for this kind of race. And odds on shot aside, this looks open. Yeah, I mean, Shaq Ampleswell is one of those, isn't it? For ninety five percent of every race, he looks like an absolute unbeatable superstar. And then there's just that he sort of drags you into taking him on. He's one of those horses that the last half furlong he never looks quite as quite as brilliant as you expect him to be. You know, I know Henry's horse beat him. Apu Tard beat him once, once last year, and he just, he just, he just. I think he'll have to get away from them before, half, you know, be a, be a long way ahead up the hill. Because I'm not sure he's going to find as much as he ever looks like finding off the bridle. Consequently, do I want to back a horse that's never run at Cheltenham in a different kind of race against different kind of opposition at four to six? I think you said it was. No, I certainly don't. I think he's, I th he's another take onable. That's my new word. I think he's very take onable. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, he's a, he could be he could be a different class to them. Of course, he could. But uh, I think I think there's plenty in there that have the potential to to give him a race. He's been running against the same horses all the time in Ireland. I know they they might be people think that they're better than the the British trained horses. But I think uh, the likes of First Flow, especially, I thought First Flow was excellent at Ascot. I thought he was really. I know people are saying he can't jump this way. He can't. He has to go uh, uh, right handed. That might be the case, but I thought it, on, on the form book, beating the champion chaser Politolog eight or nine lengths with the with the uh, King George runner-up waiting patiently well back in third, on the form book, it's right up there. It's right up there for me with, with anything Shaq and Poursois done this season. I mean, on his very best form, Shaq and Poursois probably a little bit ahead, but first flow is right in there. I thought Nubinegra jumped brilliantly at Kempton. He's always been one that sort of, you sort of wonder whether Cheltenham's his track, but the ground dried out and, you know, the skeletons are having a tremendous season. I mean, how they managed to get that two home at uh, Ascot on Saturday, I'll never know. A brilliant rides and brilliant training. Uh, and they are 
they are becoming a real growing force and i think they are their horses are underestimated in the market massively and i think nuba negra on what he showed at kempton has a shot has a definitely has a shot his jumping was was quicksilver and i don't think you can rule out altior either you know i know 11 year olds haven't won it since when 1900 and, since bob ollinger was shooting billy the kid uh but uh uh I think Altior still has a chance. I, I really do think he has a chance because I think he's very, very strong up the hill. I think it's going to be run at a strong pace. I think, I just think he's he's never been beaten at Cheltenham. And until someone does, I know the eight or nine to one, I think it's very big. Okay, so what's the uh, what's the horse for you though, uh, Tom? If you had to have uh, one bet in this race backed, right now, I've backed I've backed a couple. I've backed uh, Altior and uh, Nuba Negra have been the two I've backed and. Uh, I will stick with them. I think they've got good chances of turning over the favourite. OK, Altior and Nube Negra then. And, uh, and Henry, again, looks like you've got uh, two bullets to fire as well. Um, I'm not, am I going to ask you which one you prefer? I'd be a bit, uh, I'm not sure you'd be able to, to split them, but feel free to if you want to. Well, I suppose you have to look at the mouse record around Cheltenham. Like she's, she's been, um, you know, she's unbeaten around that course. So uh, whereas Notebook was disappointing, but... Um, and and I think the record that Arkle winners have in the Champion Chase is so strong. It's why we went for the Champion Chase with Sizing Europe many years ago. Um, that it just year in year out they come up. Yeah, of course you have uh, done that uh, that double uh, back with Sizing Europe. So good luck with your two. And uh, and Simon, what have you got for us uh, here? We didn't have a uh, price boost for the uh, the last race because you've uh, you've doubled us one up. Well, we thought given the two short prices in the. Uh, Brown advisory chase and the champion chase. We should do a double. Um, Monkfish is currently eight to eleven. Shack and Pulsoir four to six. I think the double price works out about fifteen to eight. So we're going to go nine to four. The double. Obviously, the races um, both within two races of each other on that Wednesday. So nine to four. The price boosted uh, Shack and Pulsoir and Monkfish. And I've got to say, despite the fact that it's a four to six favourite in a championship race, mm. the fact that Tom and Henry are talking glowingly about the the cast, ahead, you know, notebook, put the cattle on each way chances. Faki Dudare, good form both at Cheltenham and behind Chaka Pulsoir. Nuba Negra, Altior, uh, Tom putting up first flow. Big race. I mean, I think this is actually will be a really good betting race because you'll either be side with the favourite or there's loads of each way alternatives. And of course, I do remember Duva yeah. being beaten at two to nine. So uh, there's no such thing as a certainty in the championship chase. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you are looking at this race thinking this could be a, uh, we've had some small fiddly fields over the years, but this could be a 12, 14 runner race. Absolutely. And if, and if all these runners line up, and it sounds like they will, mm. I think Shagan Paul could, could could be an even money chance today because he hasn't won at Cheltenham. And uh, as I say, we haven't seen seen him up against a really deep field. And it looks like it's going to be a deep field, which is great. Absolutely. Champion Chase then uh, coming up uh, on the Wednesday. And we are going to go ahead and look at our final race of the evening. And it is the big one, the one everyone wants to win, of course. It is the Cheltenham Gold Cup coming up on the uh, the Friday. Uh, and uh, our, uh, our special guest for the, uh, the evening has a very strong hand indeed. Uh, but uh, as it is... Uh, Seemingly with every single race at the festival this year, it is a Willie Mullins favourite in the shape of defending champ Al Boom Photo at 5-2. to two. Then you have champ at 6-1, to one. Aplutar 30-2, Royal Bogale is 8-1 to one with Kemboy, 11-1 Santini, 12-1 to one Manella, Indo and Native River, and then bigger prices uh, the rest. And again, another Mullins favourite, but another wide open race here, uh, Henry. And, uh, uh, you know, six months ago, I think we might have been looking at this market and assuming that your two runners might have been the other way around in the uh, the market but um uh, we'll start off with manella indo in fact because i look back at his form and there wasn't a single word uh it wasn't a single mention of the word mistake in his form until he uh, he came down at leperstown uh do you think that knocked his confidence last time out talk us through how how he's coped with his last couple of runs yeah obviously um we had a great start there to the season he won his first two sort of second season novices novice chases um at wexford and navin the milan native 26 or 7 lengths uh, in wexford he was really good that day and pretty good in navin as well so he was you know he was strongly fancied in the savile's chase and fell um yeah it was a bit of a surprise he'd never really made a mistake before so um but uh so with that, and we we probably would never we the, the Irish Gold Cup was never on the agenda really. It was more um, be busy to Christmas and then um, 
win, lose, or draw on the Savills, probably put them away and go for the Gold Cup. Um, but once we ha- were coming, you know, we had a, our fall, we had to um, change the plan. And looking at all our options, the Irish Gold Cup was the, was the one we, we, we ended up going for. Um, I'm not sure he's a horse that, like, we had to have a clear round. So um, I think he likes to be ridden, you know, uh, up there and... He's he's a galloper, you know. He's he's never going to quicken. So um, I was happy enough by the second last. I mean, when he was favoured, obviously, you know, you get your hopes up even more for the Irish Gold Cup. Um, so a bit disappointed immediately after the race, but on reflection, I I, I was happy enough. And um, uh, uh, on reflection, I was happy enough. And um, uh, I think. Yeah, you know, the other horse was quickened away from him. So the positives, we're, we're going there, uh, having had our clear round. Um, uh, the Cheltenham's always the target with him. Uh, he comes alive there. Uh, I think he'll be ridden uh, more aggressively. Um, and, uh, you know, you look at Champ, he's six to one. He beat us half a length. We had him beaten everywhere. It's just... Uh, bar the line in, in the RSA and our lad 16 to 1 he's still a very good horse and uh, he had to go and get that clear round at Leopardstown, that's what we focused on um, and uh, you know, that that was done so I, I think he's still there with a with a great chance, yeah Okay, uh, and of course, uh, Aplutarch um, with a great chance as well, I mean you were talking about how Champ came and picked up Manella Rindo, well it was almost as if the um, uh, the, the reverse happened with Aplutard. Uh, was there any point turning to that home straight where you thought he might win this until the line? Funny, I did come into the last, and then when we popped it, I went, that's it, we're gone, you know. Um, but Darrow was very clever on him and let him pop it. Yeah. And um, God, yeah, just the way he, he galvanised, and then after that was fantastic. And I think you could argue that was probably the best trial for the Gold Cup. Certainly going into the race, everyone was saying it was as strong as, if not stronger than a, than a Gold Cup. So, yeah, like, he's, his form is rock solid. Um, and um, he, he seemed to stay at it really well. So I, I think Trip should be OK. Uh, I'll bring Tom in at this point because, uh, Tom, I know uh, by the time it gets to the, the Gold Cup uh, on the Friday, regardless of your uh, results, I think you... You might have a fair bit of a uh, bit of cash running onto uh, Aplutard. Yeah, I love him. I love him. I, I just only horse to beat Jack and Poussoir. He beat Kenboy, who won. You know, I just think he's got rock solid top class form. And the other thing, which sounds amazing, because he seems to have been around forever, Henry. He's only seven. <laughs> he's still only seven, and I think there's yeah. more to come from. I, I saw him. You know, after the race, I like watching horses after the race, and I thought after the Savills chase, he he was still full of beans. I don't see that. I think he's going to improve for the trip. I think he's got everything going for him. And I'm against Album Photo because I just don't think he's been beating good fields. I think this is a much deeper race than the two he's won the last twice. If you look at last year's race, it's, you know, the form's just not worked out at all. Hardly anything's come out of the race and run, you know, been fin- you know run any sort of race. And I think the likes of Aplutard and a champ and a Manella Indo are, are bringing totally different strands of form into the race. I want to take on Album Photo. For sure. And I just think Apu Tar's got everything going for him. I really do. He jumps. He likes Cheltenham. Uh, he's, I think he's going to improve for the trip. I still think there's probably more to come from him being a seven-year-old. Yeah, he, if, if he wins, it'll be a good week, whatever happens. Uh, just uh, Henry, just a quick word about the, the tongue tie on Apu Tar. We're talking about hoods and various accoutrements. Um, what was the, uh, the thinking about uh, popping that on before his, uh, his win last time? Just um, in Navin, I, I don't know, he was just a bit, he just seemed a little bit gaspy and I'm not, there wasn't, a, it was just to try it, to be honest, as much as anything, you know, as like, I was probably just a bit disappointed with him at Navin. So we sent him off to have his wind checked and it was perfect uh, on with the onboard scope and everything, but that doesn't tell you everything. So just said he, he didn't mind it at home if it could improve him a little bit. Happy days. I don't know if it's a necessity at all or not, but uh, we won't be taking it off now anyway. Uh, and uh, Rachel's got a pretty difficult decision to make, I'd say. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look, we'll see see what she decides. Um, you know, as I say, I think they're two horses with great chances and uh, feel very lucky to have both of them. Okay, uh, again, uh, you were saying uh, before the champion chase that uh, you... Uh Maybe you're, uh, you had a slight preference for put the kettle on, given the Arkle winner's record. Um, can you split your two in the Gold Cup? No, I, I mean, <laughs> no. and I'm not even sure if I was splitting my two in the championship. <laughs> or, uh... So I'm not. I'm writing the headlines already, Henry. I apologise. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, I might. I probably gave that indication, but um, yeah. I'd hate to put anyone like last year before the article. All we spoke about was notebook and put the kettle on came and what. You know, mm. it's just, yeah. it's just like I wouldn't even attempt to put anyone either way. Like. As I say, aren't we lucky to have both of them going there um, with real life chances? And given run styles, uh, Henry, you could have Manila Indo kicking on, Aplutard rattling home, and um, you know, one two would be nice, I guess. <laughs> yeah, getting greedy. That's huh? it. You'd never complain. Yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see. We'll try and get them both to finish anyhow for a start. Okay, yeah, well, Henry's got two live chances in the Gold Cup. Then, uh, Tom, just to uh, just to reiterate that you are very much an Aplutard <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, he's my one for this race for sure. Yeah, I really like him. I, I, I mean, I did think Champ was good yesterday. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yes. I thought he was really good. Uh, I think he's a player. I do. I think I think in the uh, it was the RSA last year. It's the Browns, whatever it race mm-hmm. it is this year. Uh, I thought his jumping was pretty moderate, but he jumped a lot better yesterday. Uh, whether a, it's a great prep, I don't know. Sort of running around two miles around Newbury two weeks before, I don't know, but Nicky Henderson is uh, trained more winners than most of us. I mean, anyone, anyone around Cheltenham probably. So he, he'd know what he's doing. Uh, Willie, I, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still the jury's out for me still with champ. So uh, it's Aplutard all the way. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, running over two miles and then stepping up in trip um, didn't do Aplutard any harm, did it? So champ trying to, yeah, it was, it was a sort of a progression, wasn't it? It wasn't two miles straight into the three miles. I mean, I, I don't see it being an issue, but it was just just the way he went through the race. I just, I just be, don't think you can run that way and win a gold cup, but we'll see. Uh, and uh, Simon, what have you got price boost wise? Again, uh, we're saying that this looks a uh, another wide open contest. Um, you've got a couple for us. I have, yeah. I mean, I think I think we should just give our boom photo a bit of a mention. He's the mm. sort of horse who's always overlooked all the time, partly because he's got such a sort of a, an unsexy name, I think. But he's won two gold cups. Um, if he if he wins this gold cup, which he is five to two favourite to do, he emulates Best Mate and Arkle. And I mean, so and yeah, I think he's going to be unconsidered again for all the reasons, mm. Tom. Has, has outlined there that the likes of Champ, Aputar, and Royal Pagali potentially coming into consideration, Manilo Indo, plus the old guard as well. And he could go off a, a decent enough price, but we're going to boost him. We're going to go three to one. Uh, he's five to two now, three to one on the price boost if you fancy Abu Foti. He was well backed last year, funny enough, shortly before the off, so the money could come again for him. We've also got a second price boost, uh, Abu Tar um, to place. He's currently 11 to eight to place, but we're going to go seven to four to place first, second, or third. Um, so that's a place only bet on Abu Tar. Uh, if you just want to sort of consolidate that position. But um, brilliant Gold Cup. Should remind people that this is the second biggest betting race of the year mm. behind the Grand National. And for all, we study the, Gra- the Cheltenham Festival as a four-day event, and it is. It all builds up to that crescendo on the Friday. And this race uh, has the shape to be a really good betting race. You know, the last a horse beating for a three-timer, and um, new horses taking them on, the old guard like Native uh, River and Santini as well. I think it's going to be a brilliant, brilliant Gold Cup. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like you've got that perfect mix of uh, defending champs, horses coming back for maybe another crack when it hasn't necessarily worked out, your Santinis and your Kemboys, and then the complete new brigade. Uh, but I agree, Album Photo is, I think almost he's, he's too efficient, isn't he? Yeah. He turns up, Tremor wins, turns up, Cheltenham gets the job done. There's no story, no mm. kind of... Always oh, best mate like, and you don't see him mm. often, he keeps going on with the gold cards. Yeah. So, I mean, Give uh, it a rest, yeah. he's I mean, not I, going I, I, I think... <laughs> I'm just trying to counter it because I think everyone, even when he's won two gold cups, and I can't find a single person who exactly who uh, who fancies him. Well, that's probably well. Listen, he's clearly a very talented horse. I just think this is a different race, different race, much better field. I th- we haven't mentioned Native River, you know. I really, I think he's going to run a massive oh, race. I really do. I was so impressed with him at Sandown the other day. It's going to make it a really strong stamina test as. Henry said Manella Endo is going to go out front. You've got Frodo on the King George winner. He made all around there. I think it's going to be a really good, strongly run race. Totally different to last year. 
so I think he's. I don't. I wouldn't rule him out running a big race, Native River. It's absolutely wide open Gold Cup. But then there are four feature races so far the evening. Then here on in the no, uh, but we've got a few social questions in for our special guest this evening. Uh, of course, uh, Henry has uh, plenty of uh, plenty of other uh, other chances. Uh, my producer's just talking to me in the ear, but I've absolutely <laughs> no idea what he said. So um, what was that, Rob? Let's just go. All right. Thanks ever so much, mate. Yeah. OK, so uh, we've got a few social comments in here for you, uh, uh, Henry. Uh, Thomas Cooper says, will Rachel Blackmore ride Bob Ollinger at uh, Cheltenham? Yes, I think she. Yes, she will. Yeah. There we go. Not often the answer is so simple. So thanks ever so much for that, Thomas Cooper. Tommy Cooper. Uh, we got a, have we got any more? Here we go. Here's from Chris. What is Henry's dark horse of the festival? Yeah, we got um, kind of um, uh, criticised a little bit last week for not mentioning various handicappers and, uh, and horses under the radar. So uh, what have you got that uh, isn't necessarily in the spotlight, Henry? Um, Aspar Tar, he'd be one, wouldn't he? We, he hasn't, yeah. we haven't mentioned him. He's he had a really good run um, in the uh, at, at Christmas. Um, he's an improving horse all the time. Uh, Captain Guinness in the Arkle, uh, he had a silly fall there. There's plenty. I mean, anything we're bringing, I'm hoping. You know, obviously, plenty will be disappointing when you're there. But anything I'm bringing. Um, I'd be hoping has a has a, a, a good each way chance, you know. Um, there's plenty there. Um, yeah, uh, I, I look. I, I'll end up listing all of ours because <laughs> I gen at this stage I genuinely genuinely think they all have chances. That's why it can be a fairly turbulent few days. Mm. I have to say. Uh, quick word on that. Manella Times, I thought was um, was potentially interesting given um, given who owns him, uh, Henry. Yeah, he's a lovely horse. He won't go to Cheltenham. Uh, I think we're going to go, we're aiming for the English National. Yeah, he jumps brilliant. He stays well. Um, and uh, I think um, it, if he, hopefully if he can get into that, he'll go there. And if not, probably the Irish National. And um, what about Champagne Gold? Any uh, handicap hurdle entries for him? Yeah, he's just been entered for the, um, he's been entered for the County and the Martin Pike. Um, so I'd say he'll probably go. He's in the Supreme, but I'd imagine he'll go for one or the other of the handicaps. Um, I think the, my thought process was if it was real soft or heavy ground, maybe the um, County or otherwise the Martin Pike. Uh, another name to, to conjure with, uh, Irascible uh, Henry. He's looked potentially like um, a bit of a, a stamina test might suit him. He'll stick to two for the moment, um, so he's he's in the supreme. I'd imagine that's where he'll run. Um, uh, yeah, he'll he'll stick in the supreme. Um, we we rode him um, two different ways. So Christmas he was second to appreciate it, probably beaten the same distance though both times, um, uh, uh, ridden off the pace, and then we said we'd just ride him up with the pace. So uh, he was fifth then uh, on softer ground i think better ground and um and probably maybe try and ride him third or fourth kind of thing um he could run into a place in the supreme hopefully yeah and if it wasn't for uh, training the uh, uh, the current champion hurdle favorites uh, henry you'd say aspire tower and jason the militant are uh, uh, live outsiders uh, will those two go Jason is uh, was due to run on saturday so he's he's going to run in the red mills hurdle on friday and we'll see how that goes. And Aspar Tower is very much um, on target for the champion hurdle. Yeah. Okay. Very uh, well, Henry. Uh, we'll just uh, we're going to leave you with uh, with your uh, your nap of the week. Obviously, uh, honeysuckle is the name on everyone's uh, lips, but um, uh, which is the one that you really want to win? <laughs> You're not going to get that out of me. I'm <laughs> I really want them all to win, and I'm certainly not giving any of mine that burden. I should nap everyone else's horse, maybe it might help me a bit. All right, okay. And do you uh, just before we go, do you have anything else in the uh, again uh, handicaps? Uh, any interesting horses entered? We don't have too many um, uh, in the handicaps. I'm just looking at our list there. Um, plan of attack. If he went, uh, he'd go. If the ground was better, he ran well last year. He's been a bit disappointing this year, but he's off a good, you know, similar mark to last year. Um, he obviously liked it around there, and um, Champagne Gold. If he, whatever handicap he goes for, Capucci Mix. He's he's in the Grand Annual. He ran well at Leopardstown the other day. 
So um, they, they're sort of that's the majority of our handicap runners. Okay. Commanding well, presence is another one. Sorry for the boys race. He'd have a little chance as well. Well, thanks ever so much for joining us, uh, Henry. Best of luck for the uh, the week, and uh, hopefully you can uh, you beat your uh, your record from the last couple of years with those uh, those two winners. Um, Tom, your nap of the week. Of course, you'll be hoping that Henry has a good week as well. Yeah, hoping Henry has a good week, like Bob Ollinger and Apu Tad. The, the, I think the Supreme's a very winnable race, Ross. I really do. Uh, I'm against appreciate it. Uh, not sure about Mechie. I think the horse that won on sun, on Sunday, Soaring Glory, has a really good chance. I think he's just a lot better than... I know it was only a handicap, and I know he had a low weight, but I think he's a really good horse. So he'd be the one that I'm most keen on at the current stage, Soaring Glory. Lovely stuff. Thanks ever so much, Tom. And uh, Simon, got anything else for us? What's your... Uh, from the races and the horses we mentioned tonight? I think the big breakaway, I'd love to see run well for the Tizard team. And, um, you know, he's an expensive buy. Harry Cobden was eulogising about how good a horse he feels. And he's a be- decent each way price. Actually, we have got one last price boost, I should point out. Um, Henry de Bromhead to train three or more winners at the Channel Festival is now six to one, was five to one. So I think you said he's had a couple of winners the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, two, was it two, two last year and two the year before, Henry, if I'm not Yeah, mistaken. yeah, that's right, yeah. So we need three this month. Yeah. Three this three this year, Henry, and that bet lands at six to one. Are you, lump, are you lumping on, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told you my punting skills where I'm at with those. So no, I'll leave that to you guys. All right. Well, if uh, Henry thinks it's a bad bet, then it's definitely going to come in. Uh, so, <laughs> thing. so um, well, thanks ever so much for uh, for joining us uh, tonight. That pretty much uh, brings the show to an end. Uh, Henry, like I said, thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, and best of luck on the week. Have you got anything coming up over the next seven days we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, we've plenty with chances. Hopefully, Jason will run well in the Red Mills hurdle. Um, off the top of my head, yeah, he'd be one. So, um, Spyglass Hill is in the chase. They'd both have chances, hopefully. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, and uh, thanks for joining us. I'll leave you to, uh, to answer those WhatsApps that have been coming through <laughs> throughout the evening. And, uh, and Tom, uh, thanks ever so much for joining us again. Uh, you'll be back, um, if not next week, at, at some point uh, on the show, I'm sure. Hopefully, yeah, it was good fun. Okay, well, thanks ever so much, uh, Tom and uh, uh, and Simon again. Uh, Thanks ever so much, and uh, we will see you right here next Next week. week. Look forward to it. Great, thanks ever so much for joining us. In the know then here with Coral and the Racing Post. Uh, My name is Ross Brightley. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Keep those comments coming in, and we'll be back uh, next Monday. Uh, for a, another look back at the uh, the weekend uh, and also some uh, interesting pointers in the handicaps, of course, as well. Uh, but uh, uh, right before we go, don't forget to gamble responsibly. Of course, we're talking about horse racing is a sport. It is fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. So gamble responsibly and safely as we gear up for the Cheltenham Festival. Good night. <laughs>